Arnold then says, the book of Acts is filled with prayer meetings. Every forward thrust the first church made was immersed in prayer. Take another look at the church at Pentecost. They prayed 10 days and preached 10 minutes and 3,000 people were saved. Today, we pray 10 minutes and preach 10 days and are ecstatic if anyone is saved. That's not all. Andrew Murray gives an important note. Jesus never taught his disciples how to preach, only how to pray. To know how to speak to God is more important than knowing how to speak to man. God invites us to influence our community, our nation and the world, to literally direct history while we're on our knees. And this is vitally important. God invites us to influence our community. We need to be together in prayer. When does it work? While we're on our knees. We'll be making declarations over Rustenburg at our prayer meeting on the 8th of July, 2023. So please join us in this crucial prayer time. Don't forget, Saturday, 8th of July, 2023, here at church, 9 to 10.30. It really is awakening time. What has spurred me on to really pray and make declarations over Rustenburg is the fact that on Facebook, Rustenburg was put as number one crime city and most dangerous city in South Africa. To top that, American missionaries who were in Rustenburg were posting things like, oh shame, our poor little town Rustenburg, oh that's terrible. I responded that God is still in Rustenburg and God's people are still praying and believing for a miracle. I want to ask, are you really believing God to move in Rustenburg and for a miracle? Then I'd say, you need to be with us at this prayer meeting to make declarations over Rustenburg. I'm also going to ask you to pray five minutes a day for Rustenburg from now until the prayer meeting every day. We will see change when we pray and God moves. So God bless you and see you at the meeting. Ronald Dunn says, the book of Acts is filled with prayer meetings. Every forward thrust the first church made was immersed in prayer. Take another look at the church at Pentecost. They prayed 10 days and preached 10 minutes and 3,000 people were saved. Today, we pray 10 minutes and preach 10 days and are ecstatic if anyone is saved. That's not all. Andrew Murray gives an important note. Jesus never taught his disciples how to preach, only how to pray. To know how to speak to God is more important than knowing how to speak to man. God invites us to influence our community, our nation and the world, to literally direct history while we're on our knees. And this is vitally important. God invites us to influence our community. We need to be together in prayer. When does it work? While we're on our knees. We'll be making declarations over Rustenburg.
Thank you, Father, no, for the worship. Amen. <laughs> you know what? Even animals have fun. Come on. You don't believe me? A lot of you have seen this, but I want you to watch it again. You know, it reminded me so of my dog, because that's what he does, the Lord, that chase and chase, and when she gets cross, he hides away, and then when she's looking for him, he comes from the back, you know. And I'm looking at this, and I thought, Lord, animals can have fun, and us humans. I think God must look at us and say, hey, where's my kids, you know? But anyway... As a green light, are we already on? You on? Oh, okay. Welcome to live stream. To those in bed and having hot chocolate under your duvet, may you wet your bed so you get out next Sunday and come to church. <laughs> you know what? There's a saying I read this week, and it said, not that one. Have you got the first one up? Some people are wise. Some people are otherwise. <laughs> and, and I just want to say this morning, be wise and not otherwise. Amen? And to be wise means we need to live the life that Christ said we would live. Amen? An exciting, abundant, overflowing life. Now this morning I'm going to do the message in like two parts. And um, the first I think is just vital for us to know. And hopefully the second part and some testimonies will really encourage you to live the exciting life. And I want to start off by sharing a story with you that I once um, challenged a person who was dependent on drugs and alcohol who informed me that it was that that made his life exciting. Now remember, before I came to Jesus, I had a former life, if you, just in case you don't know, and I know and am fully aware of some of these things and what they do to you. I said, <laughs> excitement, you really deceived. Because every day you need that same thing over and over to give you the same feeling over and over. You call it excitement. But... When you dependent on substances, it's just the same thing day after day, night after night, and it is the same after effects, morning after morning, morning after morning. And I said, how boring is that? It's actually boring, okay? It's dull. And I said, there's nothing new. It's the same old every day, and you're dependent on that stuff just to, to go through that same experience. And the after effects, it costs you a fortune, and it's destructive. And I asked him, can you still call that exciting? You see, I believe that if we're dependent on stuff like that, and I don't condemn those people or judge them, because we all have problems, we all go through things, amen? But what I'm saying is this, that... If we are dependent on that, it's actually an easy way out of life. Because to get to where you want to, and even the Bible says, tells us, we have to fight and we have to work at it. Amen. And I believe by taking substances, it's just an easy way out to try and forget your problems and make you feel good. And in actual fact, <laughs> a lot of us, or living that lifestyle or live that lifestyle because of hurt or words that were spoken to us or disappointments. But you know what? We cannot stay there. We have to move on and we have to get out of it. Um, a lot of those people, and, and, and look, I, I had a life before, so I'm not judging them or condemning them. I understand them. 
But a lot of those people just don't want to work on the potential and the gifts that are within them become all that God has made them. Easy to get up every day and take something and life is so-called wonderful. I say to him, you're actually living in La La Land. Then I say to him, you see, anyone who believes, and yet believe is the key word, in the Lord Jesus Christ is given a glorious blessing a change of heart, an entirely new way of living life. Isn't that exciting? Christ brings us to a whole new way of living life and believing. A lifestyle, I say to him, that is filled, not with the same old thing, but with daily adventures. You can say when you walk with the Lord, every day is an adventure. And um, it, it, it's filled with inspired wisdom, inconceivable power. You know, those people, I spoke to a man who was high up in drugs, and he said he walked around Hillbrow like he was the devil, and they feared him and all that. I thought, man, that power is nothing compared to the power of Christ. Amen? It gives you joy, I said to him, peace, hope, and authority, which you don't have when you have to take those things. And that's mentioning only a few. The power to grow and change each day. Church, in Christ, we've got the power to grow and change every single day. Isn't that awesome? And, um, well, hallelujah, one person thought so. That's good. And the thing is, this life in God is here for every one of us. Tell someone it's for you. Tell them. You see, I said to him, when, when you become a born-again Christian and you receive the Holy Spirit and you baptize, you suddenly discover and you read the Word of God, you suddenly discover, I can lay hands on the sick and pray for them. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, that's exciting, isn't it? And... Um, and, 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 and you can receive the Holy Spirit. You can speak in tongues and pray in a heavenly language and, and, and speak directly to God. Um, you can see breakthrough. When you're on those things, there's never breakthrough. It's just the same old, same old. Never have breakthrough. And as a Christian, we can have breakthrough in Jesus. Isn't that awesome? And, um, <laughs> and I said this in a very sort of stern tone, and we can overcome every problem in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, um, and you know what else? <laughs> when you walk with the Lord, you can expect daily surprises. You never know what God's going to do. And suddenly he pops up with a surprise and a blessing and he's so unexpected. He gives you wisdom, creativity, prosperity, success, and of course eternal life. But who knows eternal life if you study the word is God with us. God is eternal life. Eternal life is actually starting here. Amen. Because God is in us. So eternity is in us. Now, I say to him, so it's not the same old mundane kicks that you have every day. And guess what? That sobered him up. He actually sat and he thought, wow. You see, we're looking at him. But what about us? If we hang in with God <laughs> and if we serve the Lord with all our heart, we should be expectant of great things. Amen. Imagine Peter who always blew it. Peter walked on water. You see, today we have people trying to walk over their swimming pools and they're just about drown and they're that stupid. Because Peter said, Lord, if that is you, you tell me to come. And it was by the word of the Lord, come, that Peter got out on the boat and walked. Amen. So don't go home and try and walk on the swimming pool. You'll just get wet. But when you hear the word of the Lord, and you're in the word, and the Lord tells you, you will do it. Peter, the man who blew it, the man who put his foot in it, the man who denied Jesus, gets filled with the Holy Spirit, and goes out and preaches, and 3,000 people get saved. What a surprise. <laughs> You might wake up one morning and the Holy Spirit zaps you and you go to work and your whole workplace gets converted. Come on. You see, I want to stir up things. We, we just look at coming to church, going home, having a... No, no, there's more to God. Much more. Sorry, finger. Peter's in prison and the prison doors open. How's that for you? And in those days, you didn't just somehow open the door and... Press a remote. But what were they doing? They were praising the Lord and giving him thanks in prison. And the prison door opens. 
Going back to Old Testament, exciting story about Esther. You should read the book of Esther. It really, really will bless you. Esther is a Jewish lady, and the king brings her in as one of his ladies. She eventually becomes queen, we know. But Mordecai, her uncle, who brings her up, and I'm going to just paraphrase this. So if I leave something out that you think is important, you can tell me after it. Um, and Mordecai, her uncle, who brings her up, is sitting at the gate, and he has two guards saying they want to assassinate King Exorcist. And he tells Esther, you must tell the king. And she tells the king, and he finds out that it's true, and these two gods are killed, and that was it. But then a man named Haman, he goes, and he doesn't like Mordecai, because Mordecai won't bow to the king. He said, I only bow to God. And so Haman wants Mordecai killed, but all the Jews... And as you know, in Esther, he says he's, he's one of the king's favorites. He sits with the king at the table. He's an honored noble, and people bow to him and all that. So, you know, he gets a bit full of pride, and he says, King, you know, these people don't listen to you. Let's kill them all. And the kill, king says, okay, do it. Here's my ring. Go give the order. So he does that. And Haman, uh, Mordecai finds out and tells Esther, listen, for such a time as this you here, you better get before the king and change this. She calls all her people to fast, total fast, three days. So we have a total fast next week, three days. Now some people are smiling, some are thinking, but it worked. She comes before the king. Now you must realize she couldn't just walk in the presence of the king. He, he could have her head chopped off, have her hanged, because the king invites you. God gives her favor. She goes before the king. And she asks if she can give a banquet in favor of him and Haman. And Haman thinks, oh, now I've really made it. And this, that, the next thing. But in the meantime, the king calls Haman and says, what do you think I should do for someone that I really hold in high esteem? And he says, I would, but now Haman thinks it's him. He says, give him one of the robes you've worn and take a one of your best horses and get one of the nobles to parade him down the street and say, this is the man that the king delights in. But he'd found out that it was Mordecai who had warned him of the assassination. So he says to Haman, you go do that to Mordecai. You see, sometimes it might look we, we're going to be on the gallows and our life is finished, but God's got something that's going to bless you and let the people see how blessed you are. And so Haman has to pray. Can you imagine this? He has to pray the guy he hates <laughs> around on his horse and beautiful robe and all that. And, 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 and then he goes to his family and he falls before his family. And his family says, what are we going to do? Because now the man you hate, the king is exalted and so on and so on. But anyway, then Esther has the banquet and she tells the king that there is someone who wants to exterminate her whole nation. And the king asks, who is this? And she says, it's Haman. And the king is so annoyed that it's him that he walks out angry. And while he's out, Haman runs and falls at Esther's feet and he falls on the couch and begs her for mercy. The king walks back in and thinks Haman's trying to accost his wife in the palace. And he says, take him away. And they put a sackcloth over his head. Now, Haman had a, had a gallow, 75 foot, I think it was, for the scholars, I think that's right, there to hang, Ham, uh, hang Mordecai. And these people taking Haman out said, King, he's built a gallow in his house. He said, hang him there. He got hung on that. And Mordecai got another promotion and a gold crown and was exalted. Man, God can do anything. <laughs> Don't look at your situation and think, oh, hallelujah. I'm expecting God can do it in a minute. He can change the heart of your enemies. He can remove them. He can do whatever he wants to do. This is the exciting part of living with God. Amen. <laughs> you see, God, when you're with God, He opens opportunities for us. How many of us can vouch that when we thought it was a dead end, God opened a way for us? Amen. <laughs> he bring, gives us promotions when we shouldn't have promotions. Listen, a, a good friend of mine who, who's also not in Rustenburg, we've known each other for many years, he, he, he keeps telling me, he says, do, do you remember what happened in COVID? And I said, yeah, not only did they get a promotion, you got an increase. <laughs> Listen, God can do the impossible, amen? But we got to believe for it, amen? 
Um, you, you, you know, lepers were healed, blind people saw, our souls prosper. It takes a man like Saul, who's killing the church, and then in, in a couple of minutes with a revelation of who he is, changes him to one of the greatest men in the New Testament. Are you expecting of God doing something in your life? Are you expecting of having an exciting life with Jesus? I'm going to get up each morning and say, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do today, but hallelujah, I'm expecting it. Amen? You see, if we don't expect it, he can't do it. How many of us can, can vouch that one day we were swearing and God saved us and the next day we praise in the Lord? Amen? <laughs> we defeated one minute and we rejoice in the next minute. I want to I tell you what happened many years ago. Uh, must have been ooh, many moons ago, maybe 18 years ago. I don't know. And we had, what was it, four, four connect groups and a young adult. My son ran a young adult one with always 20, 25 people. How young people can fit in a lounge? They can't take that amount of people, but they do. I don't know, but they did. So four year end, and Stephen, your mom was the main instigator. Four year end, they were saying, no, no, don't let's have a bring and buy. We must go out and eat. And so we went out. And we took over half of Stakeout Grill. More than half. And we were laughing and having fun and enjoying ourselves. And eventually the owner, for those of you who knew the owner, a Greek chap, he came to me, he says to me, because I'd made the booking and told him what's going to happen. And he comes and he says, Andre, can I see you? So I thought, oh, what's wrong? I said, yeah, sure, what's wrong? He said, I've been watching these people. They are having so much fun and laughing. And they look so happy and enjoying themselves. And not one of them are drinking. <laughs> I said to him, what was his name? Theo, I think. No, I, I said, Theo, you know what? Let me tell you. It's because Jesus is in us and he's alone. That's Christ in us. He says, but it's wonderful. I said, you just got to have Jesus in us. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I've never, I, I've watched people drink and drink and drink, but they're never as happy and as relaxed and having a good time like you people. I said, well, I'm blessed. He said, what is the name of your church? So he says, write it down. So, okay, maybe I'll come. So I write it down. Those were the days where we still used checks. As we were leaving, we paid the bill. He called me. He said, Andre, come here. So I said, what's it? He says, your people have blessed me so much. Here's a check for your church. And he gave us quite a sum for our church. Where does that happen in the world? You can sit and get bubble us and drink and mess around and have a fight and have six drinks and, and laugh. and so. Where have you ever been where someone's come and said, here's a check for your church? Because I can't understand. You never had a drink. And look how happy you are. You, you see, we weren't expecting a blessing. <laughs> are, you, are you getting me? But we need to be expectant. And if you just live the life of Christ, he will bless you and you'll bring blessing into your life. Amen? Amen. So, so, so forget all the other stuff. And, um, <laughs> and, and the other thing I, I think that we've got to realize, and I think that's so important, and I know a lot of you have served the Lord for many years, but you know what I've realized over COVID and over the last three years is that there have been times where I've got to get back to the basics, the pure basics of my life. And to endorse what I'm saying, in, in John 1 verse 12, it says this, But to as many as did receive and welcome him, that's Jesus, he gave, listen to this, authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God. That is those who believe in, adhere to, and trust and rely on his name. You know what? I, whenever I read that scripture, I want to get so excited. Because when I received Jesus, he gave me the authority, the power, the privilege to be a child, a son of God. How is that? Come on. You, you know what he's saying here? This is legitimate. You are legitimate sons and daughters of God. It's our assurance of who we are. Listen, that changes us from inside out. If you can understand this morning that you are a child of God, that you are alive, it changes you, and it, it, it just changes everything in our life. And sometimes we are not living this life, this expectant life of what God wants to do for us because we, we, we forget that we are actually his son or his daughter. 
Prince William is a son of the current king. He doesn't walk around thinking he's just a street sweeper or something. When he walks around and speaks to people and talks to people, he speaks as a prince. Come on. Amen. Once a man said, you can't get to the palace speaking like a pauper. Now, a pauper is a poor man. You see, what are we speaking? Are we getting up saying, I am a child of God? Hallelujah. The best. I have authority to live this life. I have a father. Listen, any father on earth wants to bless his children. Amen. So why do we think our heavenly father doesn't want to bless us? <laughs> we need to understand we are his children. And this leads me to what we said last week in John 10.10, 10, where Jesus said, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said he came that we might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full, to it overflows. You, 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 you see, we need to understand that in Christ, we should have an abundant life, which means life should be exciting and we should enjoy it. Amen? And it comes to our heart attitude, our mind attitude, our confession. Oh, I'm going through this. Hallelujah. You're a daughter of the king. He's going to provide. He's going to look after you. He's going to give you what you want. And you know what? Can I say something here? And that's always what I loved about my wifey. Is if ever I came home and, and been out or something, she'd always make sure she looked nice and she was nice for when, when, when hubby, her hubby, I've got a little key ring saying my hubby with a heart on it, when her hubby came home. You know, woman, you aren't naturally beautiful. But make yourself more beautiful for your husband. Come on. And husbands, husbands, when you come home from work and you're all greasy and stinky and whatever and, and dirty, you have to just go take a shower and you spruce up a little bit. Come on. Hello? I've got quiet here. Yeah. So quiet. Because a, a, a princess doesn't walk around all dirty and dreary. Come on. The Bible says you don't have to braid yourself with chains and makeup. But, but, but just, just you, you know what? I believe that once you understand that you're a child of God, you'll start taking care of yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I know a young chap, and the Lord blesses him immensely. They now staying in the Cape, and they used to be in our church. And he used to say to you, oh, Pastor Andre, he said, when I go have my quiet time, I make sure my teeth are brushed, my hair is combed, and I, and I look nice because I'm going in the presence of my father. He had it. I'm coming as a son. You're walking around as a daughter and the son of God. Amen. Put your shoulders back. Put something nice on. Go, go spend whatever and, and get a, a highlighter, a high up or whatever they call it. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? The men could do that too. I can't. I've tried, but it doesn't work. Um, but you see, this is why... If we understand the abundance life and that we are sons and daughters of the Most High, God will change our life. And this is when we come expecting of what God can do. And that's why Paul could say in Philippians 4.13, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength in me. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. This verse I quoted virtually every morning, every midday, every night after my wife died. I can only do this through Christ. But then you realize who Christ is. And I want you to say this. Say it loud with me. It's on the board. Say, I am ready for anything and equal to anything. Through him who infuses inner strength in me. You, 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 you see, I want to tell you as, as a child of God, you're equal to anything. You're not second best. You're not second rate. God doesn't look and say, oh, Monet is top and he's the second best and, uh, you, you, you know, uh, Raymond, well, he's right there. No, 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 no. You need to get up each day and say, uh, in Christ, Christ in me, I'm equal to anything. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, Amen. It just does something. It just, just, just makes you confident in who you are. And I believe when we're confident in Christ, we can, we can conquer. And I'm getting totally off the message. But anyway, let's get back. Okay. So, I'm sharing these things with the one problem. And I say this problem is also due 
to Christians who've been Christians for many years. Because I'm telling you, over the last few years, I've found I moved away from this. And many Christians, as they get more mature, you know, you've got to feed on meat, and, you, and you've got to have knowledge, and you've got to have this, and then eventually you become all knowledge and all this, and no more God, no more love, no more compassion. And I had to remind myself of this over the last few years. See, the one problem is our ignorance of this new life. We don't fully understand our new life in Jesus. If you did, you'd be taking the world by storm. Amen? <laughs> you'd be laying hands on your children and praying for them and believing they're spirit-filled and blah, 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 blah. You, you know what I'm saying? We cannot always conceive the new life that comes from God because it's out of our comprehension. And unfortunately, we still think humanly and carnally on divine things. We still think in a human way how it must work out. We've got to get in step with the Spirit. The Bible says keep in step with the Spirit. We've got to keep in the Spirit, keep step with the Spirit, keep in the Word, see what the Word says. Get excited about the Word. The Word isn't heavy and hard. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit, to understand what is ours. Another thing is we need to see that our new life in Christ, there is sufficient power to grow us and release us into all God has for us. If you plant a seed in your garden, there's the power in that thing to become a tree. Amen? <laughs> there's the power in that little seed to become a tree. But His power is in us. He wants us to grow into the fullness of what He's got for us. Come on, Dada Bashandira, come on, get this. Amen? You've got the power in you to change and be glorious and become what He wants. He wants you to grow. Doesn't want you stagnant. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stick tonight, okay. Christ himself is our life and source. Galatians 2.20 says this, Paul says this, I have been crucified with Christ. In him I've shared his crucifixion. It's no longer I live. Sometimes we sing that song, it's no longer I but Christ, and we walk out and we live defeated lives. No, we need to understand it. We need to ask God to give us a revelation. It's no longer us who live, but Christ the Messiah lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. Church, it's by faith you live this life. Amen? It's by faith. You might not feel like it. You might look in the mirror and think, I don't look at it. It's by faith. By adherence to reliance and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Not in man, it's in Christ. I, 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 I just love this when it says, uh, Christ lives in me in the life. I now live in the body. I live by faith. What? In the Son of God. You know what? I want you to know this morning, and I want you to, to say it out with me. Say, I believe, I believe. that Christ, my Savior, lives in me. Well, listen, if he's in living you, he needs to demonstrate himself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Then your life needs to be a life that goes out and does what he did. Because you're equal to anybody. You can do the same as anybody. Amen. So you go up to someone in your lanes and they'll be healed. They'll be healed. Amen. In Jesus' name. You want to speak blessing into your business and your life and your family, you speak it. You see, but because we can't see or feel it, we are so sense-orientated, aren't we, as humans? I mean, I really hated my neighbor on Saturday. Because they were having this bride. And I'm sitting in my study, and all I can, sell, all I can smell is meat brine. <laughs> and I thought, I hate you. It's winter. You shouldn't be brine. On this time when I'm in my study, I can smell their meat. And I believe, as I said before, a law should be passed in South Africa. If there's a brian, you can find it, they must feed you. It's unfair. But you see, that just shows how essential we are. Someone walks in and there's a nice perfume and it's, oh, you know, it smells so nice, you know. Huh? Well, she's the same person. With our senses. And sometimes we can't feel and sense being a child of God and who we are in God, we lose hope and we start doubting. And, and, <laughs> and, and we, it, it doesn't matter how young or old you are, we all get there. Amen? Amen. So, 
Solution. Speak the word. Confess Christ lives in me. I am fully equipped. I'm equal to anyone. Isn't that amazing? You know, people walk into a place, especially Christians, I find, and they feel inferior to someone. No, no, you are equal to anybody. Anybody. Because Jesus is in you. He's the, so you know what I want you to do? No, I would have loved to have done a lot more. I'd like you to stand right now. And I want you to give the person next to you a big clap on the head. No, 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 don't do that. No, I, 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 whoa, the men were ready. Some of the wives said, oh, I'm watching that. I saw which wives and which husbands. <laughs> but I want us to declare this together. Um, okay, we, we're going to make this declaration. We're going to speak it together. One, two, three. I can and will become all that God wants me to be. It's God's divine power that is at work within me. I am in Christ and he is in me. Therefore, his life will become evident in my life. It's his power that is at work within me. Every day I will confess and believe in faith that God has given me this new life through Jesus Christ my Lord. I'm empowered to live an exciting, abundant, overcoming and fulfilling life in Christ Jesus. Now give him praise for that. If we can confess something like that, it's going to change your life. Every day if I'm one of them, give them some, I'm Christ is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Speak it out so you can hear it. Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, just do it. And, and <laughs> but now I'm going to come to something. Maybe see that. Now I'm going to come to something that a lot of us who served the Lord for a long time, I think, oh, well, you know, we should be on meat now. Listen, I'm going to share some testimonies just now that will make you realize we need this. 1 Peter 2.2 2 says this, like newborn babies. When we're born again, we become a newborn baby. Amen. You should crave, thirst for, earnestly desire the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk that by it you may be nurtured and grow unto complete salvation. Isn't that awesome? Church, are we craving the pure milk of the... I don't care if you've been a Christian for 100 years and you can read the whole Bible off by heart. We need this. You see, newborn babies crave nothing else but the mother's milk. <laughs> Have you ever watched the baby... And then the mother picks up, it just goes before it's even there, it just wants. Come on. And what happens? I, I, I love this parable or analogy or whatever you want to call it. Because it's, it's like a newborn baby. We need to crave thirst for earnestly desire, spiritual milk. And that's the word. You, 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 you see, a baby wants that. And, and it craves for it, and it looks for it, and makes no bones about it. It's the only thing a baby wants. Anyway, so the problem arises from when we're born again, there's a love, there's a joy, and there's a freedom that we feel at our new birth. And many times, people who are just born again or recommit their lives to the Lord, they believe now they are strong. I can do anything. I've got this joy. I've got this experience. Amen. And then we run the risk of getting a little overconfident. And our confidence is in what we feel instead of based on the word of God. Amen. And we get a bit puffed up and we rely on these experiences. But like newborn babies, we're still young and weak. <laughs> and even as older Christians, we get weak sometimes. And things happen. They give us a punch in the belly. And... What we need to do is depend on God and his word to get us strong. We need to grow and make progress. God doesn't want us to remain there, but he wants us to grow. But our new life needs to be healthy and strong. And how does a baby become healthy and strong? It craves that milk. And that's why it says crave the milk of the word. Have you ever seen a mother take her baby? What, what, where's that baby? Right close to her. Right there, feeling her heartbeat. 
right there intimate with her, having fellowship with her, being fed. The mother out of her own life is feeding that baby to make her or him strong and grow. And you know, in the Old Testament, they didn't have Formula 40 and Formula 35 and whatever. Sometimes in the Old Testament, they breastfed for up to two, three years. You'd say, what? Yeah. Because that is the milk that made the baby grow and be healthy and strong. But it came from closeness. Church, if you really want to know where you are and who you are in Christ, you need that closeness with him. You need to be close to his heart. You need to be drinking the milk. You need to be living on the word. Come on, come on. Um, <laughs> I've seen since COVID, there's some mature Christians that have missed it because they didn't crave the word of God. You, you, you want to come into an understanding of who you are as a Christian? You want to experience the, the heartbeat of the Father? You want to experience His compassion, His gentle love, His, His desire for us to grow into everything we should be? Crave the pure milk of the unadulterated Word of God. You, you don't have to look for this one theory and that one theory and what this professor said. Just, just get into the Word, and it's not hard. Ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, reveal this word to me. Holy, you, you know, this is, this is something so in my heart because I know how many times I've missed it because we don't get there. Church, I'm, 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 I'm saying to get into the word. You, you see, I want to just give you a couple of testimonies. There was a couple uh, near where my parents stayed. I was senior high school. And they'd gone through a financial issue. And they were fairly new Christians, and all she was doing was being in the Word, close to the Word, reading the Word, trusting the Lord like a little baby. And one day, who knows, sometimes when you're down and depressed, you like something sweet. And she made the most amazing fudge. Oosh, it melted in your mouth. You could taste that condensed milk. It was... I must stop talking about it. But... Um, and one day she was feeling a bit down and saying, God, I'm in the word, in this, in the Lord. And she said, I'm going to make some fudge for her and her husband. And as she was making the fudge, she had a nudge from the Lord. He said, why are you keeping this to yourself? Why don't you make it and distribute it and sell it? And she thought, who'd buy my fudge? So she spoke to her husband. She said, I'm going crazy. I feel the Lord wants me to do this. He said, let's try it. And really, I've never, you buy fudge today, it doesn't come anywhere near her fudge. Melted in your mouth. So he said, let's make some. And you know, in our days, we used to have cafes. We didn't have so many big supermarkets. We had cafes. And they went to their local cafe and they said, can we give you a consignment? Yeah, he has a batch of nicely wrapped um, fudge. If you haven't sold any by the third day, we'll come fetch it. The second day he phoned, he said, have you got more? It's sold out. Then they went from cafe to cafe to cafe. Do you know what? That fudge eventually, she had a double garage converted into a kitchen, and that fudge was going right through South Africa. We used to go on holidays, my mom and dad, and you stop at a cafe on the way to Durban, there was Elaine's fudge. And God blessed her. But why? She was in the Word, saying, Lord, show me. Help me. There's so much in all of us that we can still do. Amen? You, you, you see, there was a lady, and I've shared this story before, in, in a church, and uh, her and her husband had also just gone through a big transition, and, and, and she had lost her job, very good job, and, and, and she was also, Lord, in the Word. And the Lord kept giving her the scripture where Paul says to Timothy, remember what your grandmother and mother taught you. You remember that scripture in Timothy? And she thinks, well, well what were mom, grandmother, mother, what? You know, what, 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 what? And she's sitting in worship one day, and this verse comes back to her, but she was in the Word. And suddenly it hits her. My grandmother's German mustard. And she nudges her husband in worship. She says, we're going to make mustard. He looks at her and says, okay. 
We're going to make mustard, yeah? And, and get them. She said, we're going to make mustard. And, 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 and I'm petrified, but I'm going to take her down to the local restaurant where we eat. And listen, there's a German restaurant there. You know what? She ended up selling it all over the country because she was close to God. And she had the ear to God. And her word, she was feeding off the mock of the word. Amen? I helped a man whose family said he wouldn't be a success at anything. He was kicked out in the sense of the family business. He left. And he used to go to the rubbish dump and pick things off the rubbish dump, fix them and sell them. Take a washing machine from the rubbish dump, fix it and sell it. And I saw his enthusiasm, so I started to walk with him, and I started to say, let's see what the word says. Let's see what the word says. And what does the Lord, sometimes the Lord would give him the most unexpected, ridiculous things to do today. From, and today he's still in the word. He'll phone me and he'll speak word. I read this this morning, I read that. Today he's a successful businessman because he went to the word. Come on. I, 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 I had um, a meeting with someone from our fly game group, but I've known this lady for uh, perhaps 13, 14 years. I did her son and daughter's wedding. I'm sure it's about 14 years ago. And um, we spent some time Friday, and she's uh, uh, also, she lost her husband three months after Tish passed away. And um, she's busy handing over stuff to her children. And I was getting a bit worried. I thought, are you just going to sit back now? You're just in your early 60s. And then she came, she said, but you know what? I've been asking the Lord, and I've been looking in the Word. I've been asking God what I must do. And this is my new venture. This is my new dream. This is what I'm going to be doing from now on. And I thought, go, girl. You're 60 something, but you haven't given up. But who did that? God did it. Come on, church. How much are we missing out on? Because we're not just close to the Father in that word, drinking that word. And, and, and our businesses could change. Our families could change. Our life could change. And I want to tell you, and I don't want to go through the whole thing, because a lot of you know my story. But when I lost my, my wife, remember I lost my sister in the December. <laughs> I felt so sorry for my brother-in-law. I said, I don't know how he's going to cope. They've been married 60 years. I don't know how he managed. And, but then a few months later, I'd lose my wife. And then at the end of that year, in one year, I lost three families. My nephew passed away who I used to babysit. <laughs> None of them were COVID. But in that year, I'm going to be honest, there were times I didn't want to pray. There were times I didn't want to read the word. Until the Lord had to speak to me and he I said, Lord, I need the solution. He gave me two words, my word. And I thought, I know your word. I need something. What I heard was my word. And I tell you what, if I didn't force feed myself, if I didn't get back into the word, I would never have stood. And the Lord said to me, I said to the Lord once, Lord, I don't understand the scripture. That you will turn my morning into joy, into dancing. Can't see it. I believe your word, but that one, what I'm going through, I can't believe. But you know what? The more I got into the word, the more I could stand on the promise that I know where my wife is, I know eternal life. The more I could stand on the word that I could count it pure joy. Because through this, he would work something in me. And I want to tell you, you don't know everything, but God's worked some stuff in me that might never have happened if I didn't have to go through that. But I counted a pure joy. And I said, Lord, I'm expecting of what you're going to do and what you're going to change. But it was his word that did it. So I want to encourage you this morning. Live the higher life, as we said last week. Live the higher life in Christ. Don't live a lesser life. Amen. Don't live that lesser life. God's got a higher life for you. Press in, get it. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are you ready today to press in and say, Lord, I'm going to have it? <laughs> well, I, I, I think if we don't, we're lost. Amen. He's called you to so much. Life is exciting in Christ Jesus. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what he's going to do. So, I'd just like us to stand and, 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 and just, just stand for a minute on your own. If that's you, 
and you say, Lord, today I'm going to press him for that higher life. I'm not going to de be dependent on anything else but you and your word. I'm going to come like a baby and I'm going to crave that word and I'm going to be nurtured by that word and I'm going to grow. And I just believe um, that, that in my heart, I sense there's, there, there's one or two people here who've just felt we, 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 we haven't grown, we're not growing, we, we, we're not accomplishing. I want to say, forget what you can do. Forget what you can do. And this morning, just come say, I am your child. I've got that power and authority in me. I've got Christ living in me. And I'm equal to anybody or anything. And just get that joy in your heart that Christ lives in you and, 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 and His life will be manifested through you. You can be bold. You can, be, you can enjoy life. You can be pleasant. If you just stop striving, even to understand the new birth, just believe it. By faith, you are a new creation. I really sense it, just one or two of you, but if you just grab hold of that this morning, everything will change in your life. Everything will change. Everything will change. And so, Father, Sure, we don't know where to start to, to, to thank you and praise you for these things. But I thank you, every one of us here can and can become all you want us to be. Because it's your power that's at work within us. Christ, it's your power that's at work within us. And I want to speak something over you that I want you to remember and go and confess that you are in Christ. And he is in you. And that it is his power that is at work within you. I want to declare over you what we declared earlier. That you are empowered to live an exciting, abundant, overcoming and fulfilling life in nothing else but Christ. <laughs> He's paid the price. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And so, Lord, we worship you this morning. We praise you. I just want to pray for everyone standing. You really want to say, Lord, today I want to press him for that life. That Holy Spirit will work with them, equip them, and enable them. But give them revelation of who they are as a child of God. And let them have a hunger to feed off that word. You, you know, church, I want to tell you, David said, I taste and see the Lord is good. When you really press in and start tasting and you see the Lord is good and the word is good for you, you'll just want more and more and more. And so, Father, I just pray you'll bless each one this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for those who really want to make a change, I want you to confess and I want you just to raise your hand and just say this after me. Say, Lord, this morning, I put everything else aside except the fact that I'm born again and you are in me and I'm in you. And this morning, I raise my hand to say, Lord, let the fullness of Christ that dwells in me be expressed through me in all I do from today in Jesus name I thank you for what you've done in my life and I thank you for what you're still going to do but as from this morning I declare I will follow you I will know who I'm empowered by and I will live that empowered life for your glory and your honor in Jesus' name. And we said, Amen. And let's give God a praise of him. Come on, let's give praise of him. God's good. But there's one thing that the Lord wants us to do is to take what we've received and then meditate on it, live it out, and speak it. Amen. So we can live that abundant life. And can I change the last song? Can I? Thank you. Can, can we sing that passion one?
I'll never forget. I think we need to sing that, amen. Uh, never forget what He's done in your life. Go through the storm, go through the trials, and 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 and, and I just I, I I just don't know why, but I, I at first thought those who want to change must call them up and we must pray for you. But I but I just want to tell you something. I want to speak over you this morning in faith. That that's from this morning, if you've made that declaration, your life will change. You are going to live a better life. You are going to see yourself as better than what you've ever seen yourself. Amen. You are going to see that the risen Christ is in you. Hallelujah. You know, maybe we should just put that Irish jig on again. You want to feel some, I want to dance when I say that. Amen. Full of power, full of glory. Amen. And just don't walk out here and forget it. We walk out and we go to pick and pay or willies and buy lunch or whatever you do. And then it's, out. no, 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 no. Forget lunch. Go home and eat the word. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe it's a good thing when you're with your family before you eat, sit and share the word. Share these scriptures. Amen. Feast on the word first before you feast on the food. Amen. So I just believe there's going to be change. You know, I, 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 I really do. And, 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 I, and, and, I, and I just want to say to you, I think there's so much hidden potential in you. And, and the joy that was there was a pain, Dominique. God wants to restore. And He wants you to blossom again. He wants you to flourish again. Not saying you're not, but I believe He, he wants to. And He wants to make you in it. Some is so big, He come. Uh, and, 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 and he wants you to flourish and, and, and he wants you to be blessed again. And 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 I and, 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 and connect for say, sorry, my good. I, I, I just want to tell you, it doesn't matter what has put you down in life. You 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 stole the one that God created and made. And there's a beauty and a love and a compassion that God wants to blossom in your life. I don't know, am I right? Mm. And just receive it. Just receive it this morning. So, Father, bless. Bless your daughter. Bless her. Bring her into the fullness of her royal position in you this morning. Let her know your glory again. Lord, let her rejoice again. Let that joy and gladness and compassion come out and, and just ooze so that others will be touched and affected by it in Jesus' name. And, Father, whatever was done, that could have put her in this box as it were. Lord, we just release, forgive, and cut off in Jesus' name. And declare your life and your newness in her for your glory. I really believe God wants that for you. He, he, he's so desperate for you just to be able to let go again. That, um, that, that you him on it, that, okay, well. That you will receive it and believe it and be released in it in Jesus' name. There's so much, so much to come out. Just, just, just so much, so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Liza, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt about what God wants to do in your life. Just no doubt. You might look at things and, and question and doubt. But you too are a precious vessel. The Lord doesn't want you to doubt His goodness for you and His mercy for you. And you to go where you go and know that you are equal to anyone or anything in Jesus' name. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I just speak any doubt will leave now in Jesus' name. Well, it just sense refreshing, refreshing to come. Right now in Jesus' name. Just refresh, just refresh, restore in Jesus' name. And any form of doubt, go in Jesus' name. Lord, she's worthy, she's worthy, she's worthy. And I want you, when you get home, to say, Lord, I am your daughter. I'm a daughter of the King, and I'll walk as Esther walked. 
with boldness and grace, but name your favours with me. Thank you, Lord. You will walk as Esther, bold but with grace, and name your favours on her. Bless her with that, I ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rabashete de kesim. Babababasete de. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. There are one or two of you whose hearts long just to be engulfed in that love of God. God says, I'm loving you. I love you. You just got to receive it. You got to look past what you're going through. You just got to see I love you. And I could come to one or two of you and lay hands you, but I don't want it because I just feel Lord says this is his private moment with you. Is is just receive that love. Just receive his embrace. Don't focus on what is going on around you. But focus on him holding you close to him and imparting his heartbeat to you. Lord bless them, it's a private thing with them. It's, it's, it's something that's in their heart such a longing. It's fulfilled in Christ. Thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just worship the Lord for a minute or two. Lord, we worship you. Oh, Great are you, Lord, great are you, Lord, and worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just worship you, worship you, just bless you, just honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the abundance of your love and that you want us to have abundant lives. We bless you for that this morning. We give you a victory shout for what you've done for us in our hearts. And we rejoice in your goodness in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen, Amen, Amen. And I just believe we, we I know we weren't going to sing this song, but I, I just believe we have to sing it. Amen. And the Lord bless you and equip you and strengthen you for greater things. Amen. says the book of acts is filled with prayer meetings every forward thrust the first church made was immersed in prayer take another look at the church at pentecost they prayed 10 days and preached 10 minutes and 3,000 people were saved today we pray 10 minutes and preach 10 days and are ecstatic if anyone is saved that's not all andrew murray gives an important note. Jesus never taught his disciples how to preach, only how to pray. To know how to speak to God is more important than knowing how to speak to man. God invites us to influence our community, our nation and the world, to literally direct history while we're on our knees. And this is vitally important. God invites us to influence our community. We need to be together in prayer. When does it work? While we're on our knees. We'll be making declarations over Rustenburg at our prayer meeting on the 8th of July, 2023. So please join us in this crucial prayer time. Don't forget, Saturday, 8th of July, 2023, here at church, 9 to 10.30. It really is awakening time. What has spurred me on to really pray and make declarations over Rustenburg is the fact that on Facebook, Rustenburg was put as number one crime city and most dangerous city in South Africa. To top that, American missionaries 
who were in Rustenburg were posting things like, oh, shame, our poor little town, Rustenburg, oh, that's terrible. I responded that God is still in Rustenburg and God's people are still praying and believing for a miracle. I want to ask, are you really believing God to move in Rustenburg and for a miracle? Then I'd say, you need to be with us at this prayer meeting to make declarations over Rustenburg. I'm also going to ask you to pray five minutes a day for Rustenburg from now until the prayer meeting every day. We will see change when we pray and God moves. So God bless you and see you at the meeting.